Hey there, Freedom Warriors. Bill Fairman here with Carolina Capital Management. Normally, I'm with my sister and business partner, Wendy Sweet. Uh, she happens to be uh, at an event speaking uh, a few states over from us, and I thought I'd take a couple of minutes to go over uh, tactics that I'm, well, I'm biased towards, let's say. I, I'm in the mortgage business, and I've been in the mortgage business, mortgage and finance, for 30 some odd years. So I am biased towards that side of real estate investing. What I find advantageous to lending versus owning here in the States, we are really pushed towards owning property based on the, on the tax rules. Uh, they give you a lot more benefits tax wise owning property than making interest uh, income. So uh, owning property is great. Again, you get the tax write-offs. You do get appreciation on the property and appreciation is not taxed interimly, meaning at the end of every year, you're not getting taxed on the uh, appreciated value of the property. You're only gonna get taxed on the appreciated value of the property is when you sell it and you'll get that in the form of a capital gain. And if you've had the property uh, for more than a year, then you have a, a lower tax rate because it's called a, a long-term capital gain. Uh, under 12 months, it's a short-term capital gain and, and you're taxed at a, at a higher rate. If it's your primary residence, there's a, a whole different set of rules uh, on, on capital gains. And then if you're, I think in your 50s, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but you have a one-time exemption. You don't have to pay any capital gains if you're downsizing, selling that house, downsizing, getting into something else, and you have a lot of equity built up. So wh why am I biased towards lending? Well, when you buy a piece of property for investment purposes, now you're a landlord. You've got maintenance, you've got taxes, insurance. Uh, we always like to say trash and toilets to deal with. Uh, collecting rents. Uh, there's a lot of a lot involved, a lot of responsibilities involved. And when you're the lender, you still have control over that property without all those additional responsibilities. So you're still gaining uh, cash flow because you're receiving interest payments and you don't have any responsibilities over the property other than the fact that you need to make sure that you're a co insured on the hazard policy, because if the place burns down, you don't want your asset to go down with it without you being on the policy <laughs> to get paid uh, what you're owed on that mortgage. Now, the lending position is always gonna be in a better position than actually owning the property. So if you own the property, let's say, just numbers sake, let's say you, you bought a property for $100,000. Well, your value is $100,000. The lender is only going to lend, say, 70, 75% in our side of the business. If you're lending to a retail buyer, which means that person is going to occupy and live there and that's going to be their home, they're typically going to put uh, a little bit less than 25% down. But let's assume you're only in it for uh, 75 percent of the value or 70 percent of the value so you have less risk and what we do in our side of lending is that we're selling or i'm sorry we're lending to real estate investors and the purpose of the loan is to acquire the property fix the property up because they're typically going to be distressed or uh, they're in need of additional square footage to make them worth more so what we do is we will get an appraisal done based on the after repair value of this property. So if they're going to add an additional bedroom or an additional bathroom, something that's going to actually give it uh, additional value for, and it could be a rental property or it could be somebody's going to sell it. Uh, if it's a rental property, that investor is going to fix it up and, and get it into, to a point where it can be rented out for a certain cash flow. And at that point, they're going to refinance our loan out of it. On the, uh, 
what we call fix and flip. So they're fixing it up to sell it at a profit later. Uh, they're paying us off because of the sale of the property. But either way, uh, we're going to be in a much greater loan to value position than the owner of the property themselves. They're at a much greater risk because if things go bad, and, and what I mean by mad, the, the market could change. No one has x-ray vision. So if somebody's tearing down a wall, you don't know what's in there. Even if you do inspections, you don't know until the, you know, the walls are coming down. That, that extra expense has to come out of their pocket, not yours. So you're always going to be in a better position. And you're always in first position. So the house can't be sold out from under you. And you are still controlling that asset. So the cash flow is great. And a lot of people say, well, if I don't own the property and they pay me off, I don't have an investment any longer. If I'm buying the property and using it for rental income, I still own the property. I can pass it along to my uh, heirs. They can continue to make money on it and the property should go up in value over time. Well, there's no different when you're lending the money because when they pay you off, you're getting a chunk of change that you can make a loan to somebody else <laughs> and you can continue to pass that along as well. Um, so there's no difference there other than the fact that you're not getting appreciation. Okay. And you're not getting the, the, the tax deduction, but uh, you don't have the hassles either. So I, I always try to look at my return on effort when I'm getting into a real estate in, investment as well. It's not just about a return on your, on your dollars. It's a return on effort. And there's a lot less effort involved in lending money than it is in owning the property. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, Freedom Warriors, hope to get to see you soon live and in person where I can get to meet you. Take care.